All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Brea Frederick. Welcome to Scorecard 2024. Scorecard is the initiative of City Reports to express um, some of the activities and achievements of the current administration. The program is aimed to achieve accountability, holding leaders accountable to citizens. And the media played that role as the fourth realm of the estate by holding our leaders accountable. So today, without much talk, we'll just go straight to the point. I have a very interesting personality with me, no other person but Mr. Joseph Ladat. So I'll just give a brief background of Mr. Joseph. Mr. Joseph, that is actively involved in community service. He was the team lead for research and development at the Go Green Plateau Initiative and chairman of Southern Plateau Youth Congress. He also, he also serves as the board of trustees for Anatari Ambassadors Network Nigeria. His passion for the environment is evident through his volunteer Tier work with Climate Science and Go Green Plateau. He is the founder and chairman of the Habitable Planet for All, the Hub Fan Nigeria, a biodiversity conversation organization based in Jos. Ladat entered the political scene in 2010 as the state coordinator for volunteers for Atiku. His distinguished skills and experience led him to win the chairmanship of the Southern Plateau Youth Congress, Kwampam LGA, and later the chairman for the six LGAs of the Southern Plateau Senatorial District. As a youth activist, he has led various political movements advocating for young visionary leaders to take up elective positions for the development of Plateau. He was part of the government, the, he was part of the Generation Nest Campaign Council, serving as an image maker for the APC gubernatorial candidate, Dr. Netaway. Mr. Joseph, good to have you. You have a, quite a long CV, but I'll not be able to take all of them. But it's good to have you on set with me. Hello, Mr. Joseph, can you hear me? It's for Okay, it seems the network is breaking. Okay, um, can you hear me, please? I can hear you. It seems your network is breaking. Okay, sorry for that anyway. Okay. But, okay, I'm having internet network unstable that's what we face but let's just go straight to the point is one year anniversary for this administration and come may 29 this government will be marking one year in office let's look at the administration generally how will you score this administration from the presidency actually okay um good evening once again uh viewers and um good evening mr fred and uh thank you for having me um i count it a privilege to join you today in this very conversation as we x-ray the um the activities or um better still the administration of the current president that is our president bola Sinibu, who has just taken the mantle of leadership uh, for me as an individual i felt um he is actually or currently doing well. However, um, I tend to question some of his policies, uh, uh, especially um, with regards to um, the, the full subsidy removal. But um, uh, due to past administration, I can attest to the fact that um, he is actually starting well. And um, I can rate him for 60, if you would want me to rate him um, as he dispenses uh, policies and uh, the dividends of democracy to Nigerians. Wow, that's, that's more like a pass mark for, for the president, giving him 60. 
that's a pass. Okay, you, you made mention of where subsidy removal. On the May, May 29, 2023, when the president came in, the first decision he took was to remove subsidy. And since he did that, the economy of the country, many have described it to be in a state of comatose. And despite all the palliatives and the government have tried to put in place to cushion the effect of the removal of subsidy, but it seems like nothing is working. How will you rate the economic policies of this government? Um, just as I said in my opening remark, um, the president actually started uh, his government uh, during his inauguration day, on his inauguration day, that's uh, May 29th. Um, sincerely, for me as an individual, I tend to say that uh, that very pronouncement was completely uncalled for and uh, very unnecessary uh, because uh, you have a uh, an economy where you have anxious, desperate uh, businessmen and women who are at some point not even morally sound. I used my choice of word uh, carefully, but then sincerely speaking, uh, the type of businessmen and women we have in this country are people who are opportunists. And of course, whatsoever opportunity they get, they take it to the best of their own ability. So. As a former uh, governor of this very uh, one time former, go uh, as a former governor, of course, of Lagos State, it is expected that he studied the economy and, of course, the situation on ground before um, that pronouncement would be made. However, he was so very quick to make that very pronouncement. And, of course, the marketers took advantage of it. Uh, and then, uh, the, of course, the impact is now on the populace. You could see that there is virtually skyrocketing um, inflation of food prices due to high cost of tra uh, transportation fee. So you don't expect somebody to, to take, let's say, a product that is being um, imported into the country to the seaports in Lagos, and then is transporting that product to, let's say, Adama states. And you expect that same person to sell the product at uh, a lower price. You expect that definitely as the cost of oil increase, definitely the cost of transportation will increase. And then, of course, uh, the cost of that very product will also increase. So um, for me, I believe that uh, it was actually a very good policy, but then the implementation was quite very poor and uh, uh, completely not uh, done in the very right way. Wow, a very good policy, but the timing and implementation was very wrong in your own words. So. That's on the economy, and you talked a, a lot on that. Let's go on education. How will you rate the government? Is the government doing well in the area of education? Um, personally, I am also currently uh, running a, a BSc in um, one of the federal institutions in this country. And um, sincerely, I would want to tell you that um, this current government has done little or virtually nothing when it comes to um, uh, its own policies on education. Uh, you can imagine us having uh, a president where, or a nation where education is, seems, to, uh, seems to be uh, the bedrock of every society. And then uh, you, you have a country where out of school, number of children that are out of school is also increasing. And you are also having increased in school fees. And of course, uh, you, you of all people should be aware that uh, Nigeria is also being rated as a, a country with a high rate of poverty, uh, was especially or most especially the northern part of the country, where you, you tend to see that uh, most people are not even finding it easy to make ends need and of course have even a, a two square or even a three square or better still two square meals per day. Now you are actually increasing the cost of um, education from, let's say, for a school that I actually attended, uh, the Federal University of Joss, the cost of uh, the school fees as at the point um, uh, the president came on board was, um, I think, 45,000 naira. Mm -hmm. But then there was actually a two, two times or even three times increase. Or uh, on the forty-five thousand naira to a whooping sum of one hundred and thirty something thousand naira, depending on the faculty or department you belong to. 
So you don't expect uh, people to, after increasing uh, the fall price, people are struggling with uh, uh, the hardship of uh, of food. The food insecurity is also there. You know, inflation in food prices are there. People are struggling to to make ends meet. You are also increasing the cost of um, uh, school fees in the higher institutions of learning. Definitely, you should expect that you you have a lot of dropouts. Some people will not be able to afford a hundred and thirty five thousand era or even more. You know, per per session. So for me, I believe that um, that very policy is quite very poor. And then. Um, he, though at some point one will say that uh, the there is this uh, program that was being brought upon to cushion the effect of that very policy, you know, which is uh, him announcing that he's going to bring up a, uh, a I think is it tertiary education the, there is this fund that is being uh, accrued the, the loan, student loan student loan scheme. Thank you, the student loan scheme. So for me, I I don't tend to see though there are countries that want me may arguably see that uh, students do collect loans uh, to run the academic pursuit. And of course, at the end, uh, when they have achieved that, when they finally get uh, into the civil service, those monies will now be deducted from their salaries. But this is actually a country where we are a developing country, not even a developed nation. So some in the name of uh, school fees that are homongous, completely unacceptable, and uh, unrealistic for the common man on the streets. Wow, quite a lot of thoughts from you there. But talking about depression from the rise in school fees and the student loan coming on board, we we know that they said it, it will be coming up maybe on the 24th of this month that the scheme will actually come to bear. But a lot of people Absolutely. don't really know the content of this student loan. But I think let's just move ahead from where you talk about depression, let's go to health. What's the health status of Nigerians under this government? Go everywhere. <laughs> my my brother, my brother, sincerely, this 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 conversation is quite very interesting, and uh, I attest to you to the uh, that uh, do I saw a, a, a there was this a. Uh, message i saw i think it was um a publication from the presidency that the federal government is about to uh either recruit some a certain number of uh, staffs to be working uh, nurses to be working in the primary health care clinics all across the 70 774 local governments that we're having in this country uh, at some point uh, beautiful policies written on paper but implementation of course it is uh, something that some of us are always crying out for. You know, governments do come and go. They make pronouncements here and there, very, very good initiatives. But at some point, uh, we, we, the citizens, understand that it is not about the pronouncement uh, made. Uh, but for me, I tend to say that we, we have a very big uh, gap in the healthcare sector. And um, for us to be able to uh, to bridge the gap, you know, we should uh, invest heavily on the healthcare, you know, sending out uh, our doctors to go out and learn um, innovative ways of, uh, you know, you know, there are technologically advanced. Uh, thank God that uh, some of the state governors are even investing monies in, uh, even during the previous government of the President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, some governments have state governments uh, or governments at the state level have invested so much money in the the healthcare of our own people. However, it is not enough. And uh, I think uh, we are actually getting there, but uh, we are not where we actually want to, to be at the very moment. That is on education. But for this very government, I think um, I would want to even say that there is nothing uh, based on my own knowledge uh, or based on the information at my own uh, peril that I can attest to the fact that this government is doing well when it comes to healthcare. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You said the government is doing well when it comes to healthcare. No, I I didn't say that. I said as far and as long as the information that is on my table is concerned, I think uh, there is nothing to write home about when it comes to healthcare okay. uh, from so this government. Yes, to write home about when it comes to healthcare. It, it, it seems that you have 
a background in agriculture. So from here, Absolutely. let's go to agriculture. What is the state of agriculture in Nigeria currently under this administration? Oh. Okay, um, I was able to uh, to get a message. There is this uh, information I got. I think it was on Channel TV. I was watching one of the uh, media stations, so to say, and uh, I saw some certain a percentage of um, uh, a one minister like that I can't remember. I think is it the minister of uh, the minister for mm -hmm. there's this one minister do I actually forget he's talking about um, critical infrastructural uh, raw investment, you know, and then he also talked about uh, a 125 billion naira loan for small and medium, uh, small scale and medium enterprise. Uh, you know, uh, agencies uh, or businesses better still. So for me, I I feel like um uh, the the administration of uh, President Muhammad Ugari brought in some programs like the Ankuru uh, Ankuburua program through the Central Bank uh, that is being uh, championed by Nessa. But then that program was was completely bankrupt due to high level of corruption. Uh, I think this very government would can do better. You know, looking at uh, the weaknesses, the challenges within that very same program, and then look for a better way of uh, reintroducing that very program. Because for me, uh, as a as an entrepreneur, I believe that programs like these are are quite very interesting, especially when it comes to agri business. So um, for now, I would I tend to say that uh, uh, I just what I notice is the critical investment for in agricultural sector is being done by state government. I saw a video circulating on the social media. Uh, there's this governor that imported almost a thousand tractor. I think Niger State, if I'm not mistaken, that was like um, a month ago, a day about, you know, so these are the type of investments that we need in the agricultural sector, because you don't take, you don't talk about agriculture and uh, with our exponential population, you know, that is that with our population that is exponentially growing, you don't tend to to see that uh, we will continue to practice to practice subsistence agriculture in this very country, and then we will be fire will be will be boosting of uh, feeding our own self. It will interest you to know that, uh, and for me, it is completely unacceptable for Nigeria to be importing wheat. Now, just imagine that Nigeria is importing wheat not from a country that is even stabilized economically. No. A country that is currently at war, you know. So how can how can a country that is at peace and with our weeping population, with our overwhelming population, and then we are importing wheat from Ukraine, you know, this is just something that happened just last month, you know. So for me, I believe that our government at all levels uh, are very very important in this. Uh, we are all partners in progress, so it is not um, the work of the federal government. However, the federal government is saddled with the responsibility of providing those very critical infrastructure that would drive the agricultural sector. And then we don't tend to talk about agricultural sector when we don't uh, factor in a mechanized system of farming. You know, when inputs are provided to farmers, I tell you that I am a farmer myself, right? And at some point, the cost of uh, um, maybe hiring a tractor or even buying a tractor you know, for you to even get a tractor, I wouldn't just want to call him, but a massive, uh, this, uh, there's this brand of tractor, Massey Ferguson. For one to be able to get the complete Massey Ferguson, you need nothing less than 75 million naira, as I speak to you now. Now, which, um, which young uh, farmer as a youth would want to go into, sorry, uh, which farmer would want to carry 75 million naira and get just a tractor? You know, so I believe that government can subsidize the prices of some of these uh, inputs so that uh, we can be able to have a very bumper harvest at the end of this farming season. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Joseph Ladat. You've been very insightful and I want to commend your input, your contribution to this conversation. And Talking about agriculture, you, you've given your point. And when we talk about agriculture, you talk about a country being at peace and Ukraine at war, but we are importing from Ukraine. But 
mm. all the security situation in Nigeria before this administration and now we have our own security issues in the country but how will you rate this administration one year in security compared to where they met the situation okay um sincerely at some point i may even want to uh to say that we were completely insecure before the president uh before president bola met Tinibu take on uh, power from the previous uh, government you know because at some point we are having a nation that is completely or some part of this country is completely ungovernable you know there are places that it is uh, most especially the northeast the north central and the northwest you know if not for the fact that uh the southwest were quite very smart and uh, intentional about the security of their own region by bringing up omotekun you know that very region would have been uh, completely rampaged by uh, insurgency you know the activities of banditry so for me i believe that uh, at some point i would want to say that we we have we have we have um, we have gotten to a place where um, i may want to say that uh, the government is not actually doing is only doing its best however it does not uh, maybe put uh, those very uh, mechanisms that are required in uh, making us having a very good uh, security uh, stability right that will actually drive the whole economy because it is only a nation that is um, secured that will, it is only when a nation is secured that you talk of uh, development so for us in this country i want to say that uh, uh, you could you could agree with or you would agree with me that uh, there was there was a kidnap uh, in uh, I think in Kaduna where some over almost three hundred school children were kidnapped even during this very administration and uh, negotiations were done. However, some of us were just made to understand that uh, some some what do you call it some Boko Haram or terrorists were released on some certain agreements, which uh, the government would not want to even open up for its citizenry. But uh, it's completely uncalled for and very unfortunate for us. Uh, do I would want to say that uh, this government is a bit better than the previous one when it comes to tackling insecurity. But for me, I believe that we can do better and uh, there is more that is needs, uh, that needs to be done. And of course, uh, the, the agriculture that we're talking of, you know, there are there are places that you have the issues of farmer seders clashes. At some point, some are not even uh, farmer seders clashes. Some are completely attacked. You know, uh, the, the 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 issue of banditry, uh, where f- some unknown government, as people will tend to tend uh, to to call them. But for us who are, are farmers by profession, at least I can be able to attest to the fact that uh, these are completely um, headers who are actually having one issue or the other in the. Uh, they are host communities and taking up lands from people who are s- helping in um, feeding this very country. I think in that light, then uh, whatsoever investment they are actually bringing without peace and uh, security, there won't be any sustainable or meaningful development uh, going forward. Without peace and security, there won't be any meaningful developments. That's a nice one to hang there. Okay, we're talking about rule of law. This is democracy. When you talk about democracy, you're actually talking about rule of law. It's one Mm. year since this government came into power. Are there breach of the law? Are there seen as an attack on political opponents and the rest of them? How would you describe this government, one year, rule of law? Uh, Mr. Fred, I, I wish that this question shouldn't come because <laughs> sincerely it is it is it is for me as an individual. I I keep saying this, right? It is an individual um it is a mindset or better still my own uh, opinion rather and uh, I would want to tell you that uh at some point I will make bold to say that uh, uh this country is is a country where the law is just being made for the poor. And uh, when you talk of the rule of law, now there are so many questions attached to this rule of law. Is it that uh, the those occupying leadership positions are ruling us and then the law is applicable only to the citizenry? 
or better still, uh, as far as long as you are a political office holder, then the law is not even applicable to you. You can attest to the fact that uh, with, uh, I think, last month or early this month, uh, there is this very governor that uh, the EFCC has been looking for up and down. And I am very sure that you are aware that if there is a rule of law in this country, that person would have been in the coffers of the EFCC by now and uh, facing the root, uh, the, the wrath of the law. But I tend to tell you that uh, because he is either uh, in the political party, uh, the ruling political party, and of course, uh, some 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 big weeks may tend to actually uh, probably or or better still shield him, you know. So it is quite very unfortunate. You, you've made your point. At this point in time, I think mm. we have to be snappy. So we almost running out of time now. So thank you. Why you on that rule of law? You talk about setting people if the law is made for the poor or for the rich. So we're still there. So we talk about freedom of speech. Is there freedom of speech? Yeah, at some at some point, one may say yes. Uh, unlike the previous, unlike the previous government of President Muhammad Buhari, uh, the media has not been so gagged in such a way that. Uh, uh, people don't tend to hear their views because of uh, fear or inter fear of intimidation or harassment by by government officials. But uh, in as much as uh, there is a little liberty to freedom of speech, there are also entrenchment on the rights of citizens when it comes to at, at different levels of government. You know, when you talk of government, uh, people will just see it as a federal government. But even at state levels or even at local levels, there are incidents uh, where Probably somebody just heard in or is trying to constructively uh, constructively criticize a government official, but you tend to see that uh, uh, the, the the institutions of government, whether you call it uh, the police or whatsoever, would now be used, you know, to to act either frustrate, you know, or better still to inflict uh, harm on the opposition. So for me, I believe that uh, there is actually if there is we we actually getting somewhere. When it comes to freedom of speech, unlike the previous administration, however, we are still uh, half more that is need to be done. And of course, when there is freedom of speech, you expect that the in a in a democratic setting like this, uh, freedom of speech is actually the tool where the citizens have to hold government accountable. And where there is not, uh, when there is no freedom of speech, you expect that uh, of course that is actually an autocratic government. And uh, for us uh, in Nigeria, who, who, which, uh, who we are practicing uh, uh, democracy, uh, we tend to advocate for, for more liberty to citizens and, uh, of course, more power to the people. Thank you very much. When you were talking about the rule of law, you made mention of the corruption case that you were actually... I would just want you, like in 30 seconds, to speak something on corruption. Is this government fighting corruption? Is there corruption, the fight of corruption in the agenda of this government? How many Nigerians are even aware of the ESCC chairman? Uh, how many Nigerians are aware of the current EFCC chairman? It's actually a big question and uh, a thing that is left for either that very agency to reorient it or to, to create more awareness uh, in that very line. And then, of course, the National Orientation Agency is also there to do its own part uh, in trying to complement the effort of the EFCC. However, uh, the issue of uh, corruption to, uh, in this government, for me, I think uh, um, uh, the government of President Bola Metinibu uh, started this government on, personally, this is my, my observation, this, he started this very government at the right footing. You know, you could see that... Uh, the former minister, uh, Beta Edu, was uh, suspended, you know, just for, I wouldn't want to say just, however, because at this very, uh, corruption is corruption, it do, it, the, the, yes, no the amount of money outside mismanaged. No action. Outside the suspension, there's no report. Sorry? Outside the suspension, what is the report of the investigation? They're still investigating how many months? Okay, okay. Um, I think... Result. In as yeah, in as in as much as in as much as I agree on with you on this, uh, we of you you of all people should be aware that during the previous administration, 
uh, the cardinal, the, the one of the campaign promises of the, the former administration was a fight of corruption, economy, and uh, 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 the, the insecurity. You know, but of course, you, you are aware that uh, uh, during it was during his government that I felt uh, the the worst corruption, uh, the the worst looting that has ever happened to this country occurred. You know, in the eight years of the 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 the, the, the reign of President Muhammad Buhari. You know, but of course, with the coming of uh, President Bola Metinibu, I think he's he's actually by replacing the the anti-graph agency, the head of the anti-graph agency. You know, then of course you you cannot you cannot continue doing the same thing and you expect a a, a, a different result. So I I believe that is is a is the change of uh, the head of the anti-graph agency is quite very strategic. And then we are beginning to see that uh, even state governors, uh, previous state governors are now being uh, called for questions. And uh, I think that I saw a list of some uh, former or past state governors that are now being investigated by the EFCC. Yes, so in as much as it is... come to disclaim that list, but I think we should pause it there. Let's pause for them. Our time okay. is past tense, and I wish we have more time to talk, but maybe we'll have... By June 12th, I've, I told you off camera that we're going to have something like a, a conference discussion on democracy. So we'll have time to Absolutely. discuss more. We couldn't go into the state governors to talk about them. But in just one minute, while you're okay. doing your round up, just give a general scorecard of across the country what the governors are doing. One minute, please. So I can round up. Okay. Okay. Um, first I think um in the area of uh, critical infrastructure, uh some of them are actually doing well. Even the president himself, you know, the coastal, the Lagos, uh, is it a uh, Calabar coastal uh uh you know, coastal routes. Yeah, yeah. I think it's 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 quite very strategic and uh, a welcoming development. That is, uh, these are things that are wherever we have critical infrastructure on, in place. Then, of course, this is these are things that drive the economy. Uh, for me, I was in Abuja, and uh, I can tell you, I think three days ago, I can tell you that uh, I've seen um, developments that are. Uh, probably the the FCT minister is actually or currently um, executing, which is quite very commendable. However, I think we can do more. You know, I I would also want to say that uh, in the transport sector, you know, um, he, the the federal government has released uh, some reasonable amount of uh, money for couches uh, to be sorry for for uh, GA um, sorry okay. for. So thank you, Mr. For, I think for I, have to cut for... You. I have to cut you off because we are actually out of time. I want to thank you all for watching today's episode. It's the first edition of the scorecard where we are explaining the activities of the governors and the president one year in office. My name is Priya Frederick, and I've been speaking with Mr. Joseph Ladat. He's into youth advocacy, he's into humanitarian affairs, and he's also into the media space digital media he has a lot in his in his wallet of let's say in his profile but this is the much we can take for today i want to say a big thank you to you mr joseph for joining us thank you for joining us thank you for having mr fred and do enjoy the rest of your day yeah we'll find time to have you on set again so for everyone watching us across the absolutely country and the globe this is City Report Media Chat, and we are trying to strengthen democracy in Nigeria and Africa by holding our leaders accountable. So good night. Do have a lovely Sunday rest, everybody. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Cool.